Hey folks, I'm Joe Wetzel, the creator of Worldographer, and we're back with a, well, the first video in a while that we've done. Um, you know, holidays and family life events kind of get involved, get in the way of some things. Um, but this is a quick video that we had a question about in our Discord channel, and if you want the Discord um, link, you go to the Worldographer website and look for a forum there, you're going to see a link to the Discord because... Uh, I'm just a little paranoid about spammers getting the address, and so I kind of just make it a text image on there. But anyway, uh, the question was, uh, somebody had used Donjons, or Dungeon, I guess, I'm sorry, <laughs> spelled D-O-N-J-O-N, -O -N. Uh, so, so Dungeon, uh, their, their fantasy world generator, I think this is the fractal one, if I remember correctly. Um, you might be able to see a little bit of it behind the, the window here, but certainly once I remove this window, you'll see the see the, the map that was generated and I downloaded. Anyway, they wanted to uh, bring that into Worldographer, and because that map is, is just an image, uh, there's no real data to pull from, at least that I know of, um, then the only way to really bring it in is to basically trace it. But, you know, we make that, you know, we've got some things to make that a little bit easier for you. Um, so I, I, had, I had looked into figuring out what the defaults are. I just, I didn't play with their settings or anything. I just took the defaults. It's possible I played with it, you know, a couple of years ago and somehow it still remembered, has some cookie reminding me of the... Um, of the settings that I had chosen, but basically what I got was a map that was 200 hexes across, and it turned out to be 86 hexes high. Um, uh, and, and so when I plug those values in here, 286, when, when you go to Worldographer's file, uh, New World Kingdom map, uh, this is the dialog that will appear. And so you would want to set that to be 200 hexes by 86 hexes. Uh, you're probably going to keep the defaults for the sizes, and, let, and you know if you're using our other icon set, the isometric ones, you might want to. That will automatically change to to match that perspective. Um, but usually, you know, this is a good starting point anyway for that. And then the other key thing is you're going to want to have it set to be all one terrain, which is then going to be blank in this drop down. This is all the different built-in terrain into the tool, so you just leave that as blank. And that's going to ignore all of this. You know, these two radio buttons, this one here and this one here, are kind of one or the other. And so if you pick this one, nothing from here down is really going to apply, uh, except for the terrain icons. Even then, that's just going to drive the sizes. It's not actually going to be putting down any terrain, so there's no icons that are going to be put down for you. Anyway, um, then you would go to Generate Map, and I've already done that, uh, but it doesn't take any time at all for it to create a blank map of 200 hexes by 86 and you would end up with a blank window um, before this image got added in so like I said I went to went to the uh, du dungeon uh, fantasy world generator generator and just grabbed one randomly um, and then what you're going to do is you're gonna have a you know just a blank map area there you're gonna go to this trace underlay drawer and this button here, instead of being the file name, is going to say something like choose file or something like that. And so you would click that and then go to the file chooser to bring up your the image, or to pick the image that you had downloaded from, from their website. And I just went to their website, generated one randomly uh, with the defaults, right-clicked it, and saved the image. Um, and then, importantly, you're going to want to change a couple of these other settings or you won't see anything. You, you want to change the opacity to 50% or something besides 0%, otherwise you won't, you won't see it. Um, you're also going to want to have, uh, well, the top left and top, uh, top left X and Y's can still be 0. That's just setting where is this top corner going to be up here. Uh, well, you can't really see it on a mouse, but, but the upper, upper left-hand corner there, where is that going to be? Um, and then for these other two values, you're going to want to set it to be 200, because like we said, it was 200 hexes across. And it's 86 hexes high, but we do have this little extra part of a hex um, because of the staggered nature of the hexes. So it would be 86.5. I think that there might be a little bit of uh, image area. Yeah, there's this tiny little bit of extra image hex that's underneath there. Um, again, that's just taking the default of what... Um, 
what was generated uh, by Dungeon. And um, so you end up with that extra little tenth. So 86.6 uh, tiles high is how you want that image. And once you do that, you'll, you'll see the image will, will appear. It'll be sized and it won't be, uh, it, it'll, yeah, it'll be sized properly and it won't be covered up completely by terrain or whatever. And then uh, once you've done that, uh, then it's a matter of um, you can do this by hand. We do have a, tr um, a trace underlay functionality. Now, my memory's a little hazy, um, but so we have this convert underlay functionality built into Worldographer, <clears throat> which attempts to kind of color match things. So you can hit that and say you want... Um, so there's dialogues that are popping up here that you're not seeing, but one was... Uh, do you want the classic or isometric icons? And then there's a chooser for which terrain types you want the algorithm to use. And I'm just going to take the, 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 the defaults. And you'd end up with something like this. So the, the, the um, water is a little bit off. Um, I can undo that, actually. Undo. Um, and then I can go ahead and run it again, convert underlay again. And this time, I'll do the same thing. I just don't won't won't include that icy um, terrain that was there. I think it was, yeah. So if I do that, maybe that'll give us more of our water. Will be water. In convert, well now we ended up with some of it being some of these forested hills. So I can undo again. We'll give it one more try. Convert underlay. And again, there's just two other windows that are popping up. One's asking me the terrain type, and the other one's asking me which, uh, which terrains to use. And I'm going to turn off that icy, and I'm also going to turn off that, that grassy hills one, so that hopefully more of our water converts as water. Convert. And look at that, it did. So it's not perfect, you know, um, where you get these, uh, where you have labels, it's detecting that there's some gray here, and so that's why, um, in, in no, I, I'm not recording my, oh yeah, I am recording my mouse, okay. So where this R is in, in this word um, is throwing off that, but you get something close, and and then you can, you can play with it from there. These things are also kind of getting thrown off, so I mean, I can play with the opacity and lower that down. In fact, what I could do, what I could do is undo one more time and just do the, the, the convert underlay, but with only green, <laughs> only a couple of terrain types. Let's say that I only want that farmland type, type thing and the, um, and let's see what, so I'm turning off every other type here, except for the water. And I hit convert, and look at that, that's actually a pretty smart way of doing it, I think. Let me bump this back up to 60%. Yeah, so that's pretty good, because that just converted the whole thing to either land or water for us. So that's pretty cool. So now I can go in and I can look at the icons that, that they're using. And I can go to the uh, terrain here, and I can go for a classic. And I can scroll down and I can say, okay, well, I know that, I, you know, we've got a forest in these. So now I'm just going through the process of converting this by hand. But again, you got something that gets you pretty close to, to what you wanted. Um, and then same thing for like, you know, so we've got some sort of a fort or a castle down there. So I can go to the features and again, filter by classic. And I can pull up this you know, let's say that we're going to do a castle there. I don't know if it's a, meant to be a fort or a castle, but we'll, we'll call it a castle for the moment. Up here, we've got a town or a city, so, you know, I can 
scroll down for our town and city icons. Um, I'll say that I'm going to call it a city there. I can drop in our city and um, and so on. You kind of get the idea. Let me just do a little bit more terrain just for the heck of it. Terrain. Um, let, me do, let me just finish out let me just finish out the area that we've got in front of us here just without scrolling anywhere this just gives me a nice isolated area but we've got that and then we've got some grassland icons that we want so i grab our grassland and go here oops and then we've got a desert up there at the top so I can grab our desert icons. Something like that. You know, it's probably, I'm just going to do a couple more of these just so it connects. Um, so we've got that, and then, uh, you know, he's got a, a river going through there. And so you could go down to our lines tool, our shapes rather, shapes drawer, and pull up the lines and pick the preset for a river, which is kind of going to be too thick, actually, the preset, because it's kind of meant for a different, different type of map. But... Um, I can pull that and I can see, hey, here's roughly how his river is going. Now, if I wanted to take more time, I could even do a curvy river with the um, with our cur curve tool so it's not going to look quite so blocky. We got that. And then deselect that one and then continue on you've got this one up here so so that gives you an idea of what to do you can also use the shapes to kind of view yourself and to kind of um, add a polygon to cover up some of those um, ocean areas to give yourself more of an ocean look or to match their ocean look um, and then if I go back down to the uh, trace underlay drawer, I can set the opacity to 100, which is going to make the map that we are making completely opaque. So you're not going to see the map underneath at all. You get something like that. And so that's kind of the beginnings of how you would convert this map uh, into uh, a worldographer map. So uh, I hope that's helpful. Uh, I'll provide the links uh, to their map generator, to the dun dungeon map generator, as well as to our tool. And I'll probably write up these instructions as well and post those too. So I hope these are, are helpful to you. Thanks a bunch.